Hello, so today I wanted to discuss the decrease in Apple's stock price. So earlier this year, they were lauded as the first trillion dollar company, and now they have fell far away from that. And I've been reading news and tweets that people have been sending me where they say, look at this, Apple is failing, they're failing. And I don't personally believe that's true. I'd like to just go over some of the uh, Tim Cook's letter to the shareholders, a little bit of their own finances, and give some of my opinion. So Tim Cook wrote a letter to investors about what was going on here. The first thing that he blamed was the timing of releasing certain devices. The second thing he blamed was the strong U.S. dollar, Then, which seems a little bit like the dog ate my homework. Then he said that we had a bunch of new products and that we had supply constraints. It happens. Uh, then he said there was economic weakness in emerging markets, and there was also, you know, uh, in China that there were rising trade tensions, and that was in the climate of mounting uncertainty, what lowered sales of. And that that that's this also seems a little bit like the dog ate my homework, but the two interesting points here are the it's really hidden. You got You got to scroll quite a bit to find it, uh, and he says that. The customers were taking advantage of significantly reduced pricing for battery replacements, and if customers are replacing their battery, maybe they are not upgrading to the newest phones. Because he said that there were also less upgrades, so it says iPhone upgrades were also not as strong as we thought they would be. Now, this is an interesting thing, and I I'm going to leave this to you as to what it is you think the, the case is. So Apple lowered their pricing on batteries from $79 to $29. However, Independent Repair has been pricing batteries at $40 to $60 bucks for the last, I would say, 10 years now. I mean, $40 to $60 bucks has been the standard price, depending on where you are in the country, to have an iPhone battery swapped out. And I don't see how people have not been using that option this entire time. Do you think that there are a bunch of people out there that would rather upgrade their entire phone than have an independent repair shop sully their iPhone with a non-authorized battery? If that's the case, then by all means, maybe this is correct. I personally think this is a combination of two things. The first thing is that this valuation, in my opinion, was a bit of a bubble. So let's just go over some, uh, some documents here. Let's just go over some 10Qs. So the 10Q is a form that you file with the SEC if you're a public company. It's a quarterly, it gives you just quarterly statements, uh, you know, how much, what, what your assets are, how much money you made, you know, all, the, all that good stuff. So let's just take a look at some of this. So the net income here looks like it was $8.7 billion in 2017 when the stock was 148 And then when the stock went all the way, you know, way up to into the 220s around there, now you're at 11.5 billion. So, I mean, th this is pretty much a 30% increase. And if I do quick math in the back of my head, that doesn't add up to 227 stock price, especially when you consider the fact that the actual equity of the company went down in that time. So if we go over to equity here, shareholders' equity is when you take all of the stuff the company has, all of their assets, their cash, their inventory, and then you take all of their debt, they, well, who, what they owe people, etc., and you put it together, and you get what the company is worth if they were to just go, you know, just close their doors today and sell everything. Uh, so if you look here, you'll see that the company was actually worth more money in terms of shareholders' equity last year than it was this year. And, but it only had a 30% increase in net income, Yet, for some reason, the stock had went up by over 50%. And if we look at the, let's just take a look at the 10K, which is going to be the yearly report, not the quarterly report. And we look at something like, let's just go over the net income. You'll see that the net income went up by uh, about 20% from this year to this year. Let's just see if, yeah, about, about 20, 23% the income went up from 2017 to 2018, the equity of the company actually went down from 2017 to 2018, 
meaning the company was worth less. The income only went up about 23%. And yet the stock went from here to here. You know, just overvaluation. People getting too excited. People expecting too many returns too quickly. And that's not Apple failing. It's not Apple's fault, in my opinion, if a bunch of people overvalued them based on their own greed. Now, the other thing that we have to consider here is Apple's own audience when we're talking about demanding constant growth from a business. Apple has a very specific niche target audience. They're very clear about the fact that they're not trying to be everything to everyone. So there are other companies that would make big phone, little phone, expensive phone, cheap phone, Windows phone, Android phone, phone that you can has a headphone jack, phone that doesn't have a headphone jack, phone that is very rugged, phone that is very pretty. With Apple, you get iPhone. Like, that's it. Just iPhone. You have one choice. And it was only years after Steve Jobs had passed away that you would even get the choice of big phone, little phone. So there's a, you know, if, if you want a headphone jack, just no. You want a user removal battery? No. You want to be able to install third-party applications without jailbreaking? No. So they have a small target demographic. And that is how they're able to extract such great profit margins by providing that very small target demographic with what they want, but they're very clearly not trying to be everything to everyone. So at some point, they will have sold an iPhone to every single person who wants an iPhone. Now, at that point, you're not going to continuously make money by selling more iPhones to other demographics. You're going to make money off of the upgrades. And the thing with making money off of the upgrades is that there has not been a lot of innovation in the past few years in the smartphone market. Think about it. Uh, if you look at the iPhone 2 and 3 and 3GS, you know, you go from no GPS to having a GPS. That's cool. Then you went from, let's say, the 3 to the 4. You went from a really crappy screen to a really nice screen. Wow, that's cool. Then you go from that to, let's say, the 5S. You go from logging in with typing a pin to logging in with your finger. That's cool. Then you go from that to, let's say, the 6 Plus, and now you have a choice of big phone versus little phone. That's cool. But then what, what happened after the 6 and the 6 Plus? Like with the 6S, what did you really get that you didn't get with the 6 Plus? What did you really get with the 7 that you didn't get with the 6S? What do you really get with the 8 that you didn't get with the 7? Okay, you get an incrementally better camera and an incrementally better screen and an incrementally better processor. But for most people, they don't really care. These are incremental differences, and people are not going to spend large amounts of money on incremental differences. And this is not just a criticism of Apple. This is a criticism of the entire smartphone market. There has just not been a lot of reason to upgrade. I have a Samsung S7, and every time I go into the store and look at modern smartphones, I genuinely don't understand why I would dump my current phone to spend six to nine hundred dollars on one of these things that essentially does the exact same thing, just a little bit faster with a little bigger screen. There's just not that much. And when you combine in the fact that it's, oh yeah, you don't get a headphone jack. You know, it's, it's not like there is this great budding reason to upgrade. Now, a lot of people are going to say, Apple never innovated. They just stole. They stole their ideas. Okay, fine. Let, 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 let's assume that's true. I'm not going to say that. Let's just assume that Steve Jobs stole every idea. At least he stole. Like, what, what is Tim Cook doing, really? Uh, at least Steve Jobs would say, huh, that seems like something that I could take and add a little bit of taste to it and market really well and that millions of people would love. At least Steve Jobs could steal. What is Tim Cook doing? What, I, what revolution is he bringing to the company? I don't see it. I genuinely don't understand why people would want to buy the latest iPhone the same way I don't understand why people would want to buy the latest Samsung or the latest OnePlus or the latest Xiaomi. There's just, there hasn't been much revolution in the smartphone world. So when you combine the fact that this valuation very clearly seems to be a bubble based on the fact that the stock went up over 50% on increased net profit of 20% as per the, 8K, the 10K and an actual decrease in shareholders' equity uh, this this is a stock price that I think it should have never been reached. So if if the stock price reaches a price that it never was supposed to reach and then resets itself back to what it was supposed to be to begin with, in my opinion, this is not a failure. Apple seems to be doing just fine. 
They seem to be making more and more net income year after year. This is not something to be worried about unless, in terms of Apple's health as a business. Uh, I'm sure that if you're some Wall Street investor that is looking for your continuous con uh, return day in, day out, that this is a problem for you. But in my opinion, this is not a serious issue for Apple. It's only a serious issue for people that want to just beat blood out of a stone uh, of the company. Now, the issue that I do see facing these companies in the years coming by is the lack of innovation, particularly in the smartphone space. Now, the real problem I see facing not just Apple, but other companies as well, is the lack of innovation in the field. If your business model is based on getting people to upgrade to the latest model, this is not going to be something you're able to do if you don't innovate. You need, there has to be a reason. Like, again, they added GPS, they added fingerprint scanning, they added screens that had real black levels that were actually black and didn't just look like a flashlight behind a drape. They, you know, they, they were, there was innovation, but that innovation has just stopped and it's just kind of become slimmer bezel, bigger screen, slimmer bezel, bigger screen. That's just not enough for people to, to want to upgrade to the newest device. You need to give people a reason. And removing the headphone jack, adding three to $500 to the base price of the phone while removing the headphone jack, is just not going to give people that excitement to upgrade if you're not adding new exciting features along with it. And this, this, is, this is where I think there will be a problem in the future. I think the people that are making this out to be Apple is going out of business, Apple is be ruined, Apple is blah, blah, blah. In my opinion, I think those are melodramatic Apple haters that are just looking for any reason to say that something terrible has happened to Apple and ha, ha, ha. And again, when they release a product that has a serious design flaw, I will be the, the first one to make a video saying, look, the company that charges more than everybody else for the same hardware does it again. But... Um, well, but I, I, I can't uh, just laugh at their stock dropping when it rising to this point to begin with was probably some Wall Street bubble. Um, again, just look, look at the documents, look at the finances, and you'll see for yourself that this probably should have never happened. That's my opinion. And um, again, uh, I, th I do think that it's just a little bit of... Uh, ex excess Apple hating for people who were saying that they're failing because of this stock drop. Um, full disclosure, I do have a fever, <laughs> so that, that could be contributing to my opinion here. But that's it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, I'll see you next time.